thing. You know what I mean? So um, I read that you, so did you grow up in uh, Ephraim, Utah or late in Utah? Bro, like I, I've been all over the place. My story is very, is very crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and obviously you can allude to certain things and then certain things that you may not want to talk about, that's fine. But I did read, you know, that you, the, the book Foster and James came from um, you being in the foster system and abuse growing up. So just kind of like paint me a picture just on what your upbringing was like. Maybe you don't have to like give grave details if you don't want to, but um, just uh, like paint me a picture maybe from, you know, grade school to you finally going to Layton Christian High School. Okay. Um, so my story, like I said, is very, very unique. So um, I was born in Columbus, Ohio, you know what I'm saying? So um, my mother and my, my sperm donor, and I say that because there's certain milestones for me as a kid that a father's supposed to be there for her kids, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. you know, every father knows, like, I'm a father right now, so I know what it feels like to give back to kids and stuff. So uh, when I was growing up, so my mother and father kind of met, like, had me in Ohio. Uh, my mother found out that my, my adoptive dad, I mean, my, uh, my sperm donor was married and he had two other kids with another wife, but it was in the process of divorce. But then, you know, they had me, basically. Okay. Uh, and so when she found out about stuff like that, his other wife and things like that, so she said, no, like, I'm going to leave. So my mother's Nigerian. Okay. So, her family's from Nigeria. So when I was about one and a half, almost two years old, you know, she took me back to Nigeria with her, you know? Mm. So I spent the, from one and a half to 10 years old, that whole childhood in Nigeria. In her, in her okay. Culture, speaking wow. my different dialects, the cuisine, just everything. Wow. Okay. Culture, basically. Yeah. Um, like, and life out there was basically good in a sense because it made me appreciate the value of having less. You know? Okay. Okay. You know how you go in the shower right now, you turn the faucet on and the water will hit you, whatever. Back right. in that period, we didn't have that. You know what I mean? No to wow. have a warm, a warm water. You had to fetch water from a well or whatever. You put it on the fire to have a warm shower. That's how yeah. you showered. You know what wow, I'm saying? Wow, yeah. wow, wow. So okay. Bottom, bottom. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, there. it made you appreciate um, like like U.S. living. Yeah, That's basically. Different. Yeah, so, okay. Um, I spent, like I said, those 10 years, like that was like the, the best time I had in my life because I appreciate the value of having less but you know appreciate that i have more so. yeah well like what what were the people like in nigeria were they like more loving did they not because you know you know things are so on the surface here in the united states people yeah. people are so fake they act like they care they really don't um but i know even back then you know we didn't have really have access to technology like that so it was more so just like kind of like a loving environment creative environment yeah it was i mean it was loving because you gotta understand it. not everybody out there is what they as they are i mean as far as the government the government is very corrupt basically okay. but People from the town and village that I grew up in, it was like everybody was friendly. We always help each other out. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, like you run neighborhood people. Like, oh, yeah, I know this person. Yeah, or, yeah. Like back to how we grew up. Exactly. Like, I walk in your house, basically, like call your mom, mom. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, you <laughs> right. know what I mean? We walk in, everybody take care of everybody. Okay. So I'm not saying like if the, the environment was always perfect, but just like any environment that you have the bad people, you got the good people, stuff like that, too. Mm -hmm. So that's just how it was. You know what I mean? People help each other, are friendly. Um, but there was a lot of, you know, people just being corrupt because everybody want to win. You know right, what I mean? right, right. I got you. Yeah. Basically. So okay. I grew up those 10 years, um, just living life, doing what I had to do, doing the best I could, you know, living with less, you know, mm -hmm. like you didn't have free, uh, TVs, we didn't have game systems, we didn't have anything there. You, you play, you know what I'm saying? You, you play mangoes, you ate cashews, you ate everything. And that's another thing I'm going to talk to you about too. You probably, you know, you know what a cashew is? Uh, the only cashew I know is like a like a like a nut, like a peanut. Okay. Yeah, I'm a, when you get off when we get off this interview over here right now. Eventually, I want you to Google what a cashew is. There's actually okay. cashew fruit that the nut comes from, and then the oh. nut is served now. Like I'm okay, Google it. Okay, and listen too. Make sure y'all Google what a cashew. Definitely. Is. Okay. Okay. I I I never even knew that. <laughs> yeah, you're saying you're gonna learn something today. So right, right, right. <laughs> so I grew up eating a cashew. A cashew is like. It's like a peach. It's like soft like that. The skin texture is like that. You bite into it. It's so sweet, so juicy. But if you get on your shirt, it'll stain you. But I grew up eating that in Nigeria. Okay. It goes, everything like that. So like just all the fruits, all the junk like that. So it was, it was like the best like 10 years of my life, basically. 